I've been waiting to cross this bucket list train trip off my list for a long time. This is Via Rail, Canada's only national passenger rail service, which will take us from Halifax, Nova Scotia, across the world's second largest country, all the way to my hometown of Vancouver, British Columbia. We'll be sitting in economy and business class, as well as trying all the sleeper options. And yes, I'll be showing you the bathrooms too. If you rode the train straight across Canada, tip to tip, without stopping, it would take about a week. But for us, this journey will take 10 weeks. 10 provinces, 10 episodes. You see, I used to travel differently. I'd see an ad for a beautiful place, I'd buy the ticket, and I'd fly around the world to do some tourist activity that thousands of people do a day. But sitting at home for the last two years had me realize that this is not how I want to travel anymore. Which is why, in this series, we're traveling across my home country of Canada and trying the most incredible and authentic experiences we can find in each province. Canada's small towns and hardworking, friendly people don't get the credit they deserve. So we'll make sure that changes. We'll be log rolling with a seven-time world champion, wow. helping with the harvest on a potato farm, training with the Canadian Coast Guard, flying with Canada's oldest flight school, and learning more about our Indigenous culture, which is why, as a proud Canadian, this isn't just the trip I want to do, it's the trip I need to do. And we're starting right here in Newfoundland. This is Downey Live Travels by Train, a coast to coast, one of my best and biggest adventures yet, and it starts right now. To get to Newfoundland, we're taking the Marine Atlantic Ferries. And ours, the one on the right, the Atlantic Vision, is North America's largest passenger ferry. It's a 16 hour ferry ride. Now, because I booked too late, I wasn't able to get a cabin. So I have to get up there and get good seats because that's essentially where I'm sleeping tonight. Oh my gosh. How can they call this a ferry? This is exactly like a cruise ship. It says there's no sleeping permitted, so. I think we're slightly behind schedule. Uh, eating in place. Instead of eating alone, do you want to join us? We hike the uh, North Coast Trail. <laughs> I know it was sunny when we started, but it got very dark and a little bit misty in the air. It's a very typical Atlantic Ocean weather, I think. We are headed to Newfoundland after all. So no sunset tonight. This looks dark and quiet. Could be a good option. Wow. This, this is Newfoundland. This is exactly what I expected it to be. Gray, cool, but not cold. Mountains, barren shore. This is what we're here to see. We made it! <laughs> I will now be on the road for two and a half months. The trip starts now! This is the most easterly point in North America which makes us the very first people today to watch that sunrise. This is Downey Live Travels by Train across Canada, which means we're starting here in Newfoundland, the most easterly province in Canada. But you're probably saying, Mike, there are no trains in Newfoundland. I will prove to you that there were. And all the history of it is here at the Railway Coastal Museum in St. John's. The museum is actually in the old train station which was built in 1903, so well over 100 years old. It's a beautiful building in itself, but if you look across the street, you'll see some actual trains. I mean, it's a train in Newfoundland! They actually have a still standing train here next to the museum in downtown St. John's. They have an old coach car, they have a mail car, and they have an engine at the front. They also have a great example of an old speeder. This is where a maintenance crew would hop inside, run down the rails, they'd be pulling a trailer behind full of tools and rail ties, and they could fix whatever needed to be fixed, and back without having to send out an entire train. It's a little bit more efficient. And this is the Avondale Railway Museum. You see, there isn't a railway on Newfoundland now, but as of up to 1988, there was. It ran passenger and freight rail. And this is one of the few places in the entire province that you can actually still see trains sitting on tracks here in Newfoundland. Well, it's still loved by the Newfies, right? Themselves here. They just Woo! introduced themselves. Hi. Fantastic, friendly people. Hi. The train here in Newfoundland was a big thing here one time. Yeah. And that was a means of our transportation for supplies, uh, food. What, what happened was, over the years, the tracks wasn't big enough for newer trains to come in. Right. So they had to discontinue it. So right. basically now this is a beautiful museum. Yeah. And hopefully everybody can come to see. Come visit the Avondale Museum, <laughs> the Railway Museum. Yeah. Oh, you might run into Bonnie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> are you are you friends or sisters or? Best, best, friend for years. Be, best friend uh best friend she's giving all the information on bonnie here bonnie was the the island girl in what year newfoundland in the 2003 2003 yeah still <laughs> still look great <laughs> once it was announced that the railway wouldn't be getting any funding anymore canadian national railway actually pulled up their tracks pretty quickly within two years all the tracks on the island were gone Except for this stretch, which you can ride on this sort of miniature train. Not miniature miniature, but, you know, scaled down anyways. And they have even a nice caboose that you could ride in if it were, oh, I don't know, raining like it does. Of course, probably the most important piece of railway equipment is the snow plow. I mean, just look at how much snow it could take. I'm nine feet tall, too. So that, you know, we're just 23 feet of snow. I'm six foot. It's fine. Newfoundland is a big province, but it wasn't well connected by roads. The only way to get from community to community was by ship until they built the railroad. And with Newfoundland being the closest part of North America to Europe, it was essential for military use through World War I and World War II. Again, making the railroad a key component of the success of life and operating in Newfoundland. Now, no one wants to do this trip alone, and none of my friends can take 10 weeks off work. But, luckily my friend Will is another travel vlogger, and this trip is right up his alley. Welcome everybody! Now, we have a few days until our train departs, so we thought, why not get to know Newfoundland a little bit better? And the first thing you have to do is get screeched in as an honorary Newfoundlander. Yeah! Hey, hey, hey! I understand we got a bunch that want to get screeched in here tonight. Hopefully becoming right proper honorary Newfoundlanders, yes? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Michael from Vancouver. Michael! Uh, uh, Will from Montreal. And Will! My name is Skipper Lukey, and I uh, is a Newfoundlander. Now, the tradition of getting screeched in has many different myths about how it came to be, but the one that seems to be the most likely is that Newfoundlanders took joy in watching American soldiers stationed here in World War II reacting to how harsh the local screech rum was. It's starting to burn now. It's burning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a delay burn. Served along with the rum is Newfoundland steak. It's really just bologna, but the reason it's called Newfoundland steak is that this is what the rich kids ate, while the poor kids ate lobster or cod that their parents brought home from a day of fishing. <laughs> oh, how things have changed. The whole experience lasted about 30 minutes of stories, folklore, singing, and laughter. And with that, we walked out with our honorary Newfoundlander certificates. I, I promised myself I wouldn't drive <laughs> Class of 2021. We did it! Which meant our journey across Newfoundland could continue. And our first stop was for some local food. This is a Towton. Holy Tootin Tootins. This is a Newfoundland Tootin. Wait, how did I just pronounce it? No, Dootin, it's a Tootin. <laughs> no, it's a Towton. This one with the bacon, baked beans, and molasses is a Towny Tootin. Since I'm a Downy, had to order the Towny. <laughs> and uh, here we are. So basically, a Tootin is kind of like a pancake. It's just dough, it's a little bit thicker, but here they deep fry it. So you can see how soft yet still crispy that is. Never heard of it before, but looking forward to trying it. It's hard to describe. It's like a cross between a donut and a croissant and uh, yes. how have I, born and raised in Canada, never heard of a Towton before. This is delicious. If you come to Newfoundland, you have to try this. I thought I would really want this with maple syrup. The molasses is really good. I don't know the last time I've had molasses. I like it. Now that we're fed, it's time to keep moving. Just as we expected, Newfoundland is full of cute and quaint fishing villages along with jagged cliffs and impressive lighthouses. Oh, except for maybe this one. It's not about the size of your lighthouse, it's just about how bright your light is, and this guy's pretty cute. Does the job. <laughs> look, how, look how small this door is. But before you mock the size of the Greenpoint Lighthouse, know that it has been here since 1883 and is protected as a historic site. Its short, only six meters, and functional design, made of steel instead of concrete, mean that it can withstand the rigors of the Newfoundland coast. In fact, it kind of reminds me a lot of the Newfoundland people. Humble and resilient. So the truth is, traveling on the road isn't always glamorous. We're in this cute little motel. We actually have a little sea view here. But when you're driving and traveling so long, you're up early, it's either stopping at diners or fast food restaurants. We stopped at a grocery store yesterday. Will got us some bananas and some oatmeal. Found a coffee cup, boiled the water, and 
Gonna add it. The problem is, how do you eat it? As you know, this whole experience is presented by True Earth. They're more than just laundry strips, they're trying to get rid of plastic in all household products, which is actually why I partnered with them. But this works really well for me because it's a little travel pack of bamboo cutlery. We have a bamboo knife, bamboo fork, bamboo spoon, bamboo straw with a straw cleaner, and even chopsticks. So this little pack that folds up efficiently like this has everything I could need to stop and have a picnic on the road or an oatmeal in the hotel room. Completely reusable, washable, so I'll end up just washing this in the sink in the bathroom and it'll be good to go for lunch on the road or breakfast tomorrow. I know this isn't luxury travel, but this is this is the realities of it. And I really like that True Earth makes eco-friendly products with no plastic so I can make smart decisions for the earth and for myself while I'm on the road. And I have a discount code for you so you can check out any of their products with the discount code Downy Live. Save yourself 10% off. Great for laundry or travel. Okay, let's hit the road. Discovering the trains of Newfoundland was fantastic, but that's about all they have here. So we are headed to Halifax, Nova Scotia to take the train across Canada. But first we have to get to Halifax and that's a long drive around Newfoundland. Time to get started. Safety first kids, buckle up. It's these kind of roads when you see it, you gotta drive down. Blow me down, but you won't let me down. This is the quaint fishing village of Dildo, Newfoundland. Home to a fleet of cod fishing vessels, but also a number of locally owned businesses. Dildo Dogs, the Dildo Suites, and Nan and Pops for all your Dildo souvenirs. From Dildo with love. I think there's one more business in town we need to try. To new places with new people. Cheers. When you're in a fishing village, you get the fish and chips. Mm. Who knew? Dildo Brewing. Best fish and chips in Canada, said by me. I did ask what kind of fish was in the fish and chips and it's local fresh caught cod from this morning. And that got me thinking, how does one fish for cod? Well, that's when we stumbled upon Captain Dave. Morning. Now when we joined him, he was cleaning his cod to store for the winter and he immediately put us to work. The cod has been caught and cleaned and we're setting them out to dry and then they'll be salted to be preserved, just like his parents did. Did you caught that and you just keep it here? No, no, I didn't catch these. They came ashore last night. No, they just no. come ashore. All aboard. All aboard. So Dave took us out on his boat to see if we could catch a cod on our own. Try and pull up a fish. Right. A cod? Well, we're what do you think? Now, this is not a very good spot for catching cod where we're to right now because right. we cannot go out today on the fishing ground because it's just too windy. Now, Dave, I know you Newfoundlanders kiss a lot of cod. Would it help to catch one if I puckered up here? Would that entice it <laughs> to come on up? Unfortunately, with the high winds, the only catch we made was Dave's hat he had lost in the water. That's what we call catch of the day. <laughs> but we did learn a lot about Dave's past and how he brought together this little fishing village. Somebody said to me a while ago, you're 74 years old. Wait, wait, you're 74. Yeah, you look 75. Much younger. Why don't you sell your fishing license? Right, and retire. My fishing license is my freedom. Yeah. And what's the value of freedom? Can't put a price on it. So let me get this straight. You've been here for 17 years on this site I, I, and you built this I, I didn't build these buildings, I no. told them. These are all original buildings, saved from demolition and transported here to create his pier and fishing village. I brought them here because you cannot build history. Oh, look at it come right off. Oh, oh my cheek. Oh. It's not even on pontoons. You literally floated the building, just the wooden building. I've never seen that before. That's amazing. Now, let me tell you how badass Dave is. He reconstructed an entire say whale skeleton. Do you know how hard that is? I called the whale expert in Sun John's and he said, Dave, what are you going to do with the whale? Yeah. I said, I might put the bone together. Okay. He said, you mean you're going to articulate it yourself? He said, well, you can try it, he said, but it won't be museum quality. Right. I said, okay, thanks for the encouragement. Yeah. He let the carcass decompose for three years. I had a lot of employees. Okay. They're called crows. Yeah. <laughs> and seagulls. I see. And see the rib cage here. Yeah. See the jawbone. Yeah. 
See the blubber? Yeah. What a mess. Yes. Then he cleaned each bone by hand with a toothbrush before carefully reassembling it with his son over a full year. This thing is huge. I cannot believe Dave did this all by himself. The man is impressive. Captain Dave is a true representation of Newfoundland, but what's really impressive is running a winery that doesn't use grapes. This is the Auk Island Winery. Now there are only three wineries in Newfoundland, and this is one of them. Instead of using grapes, they make specialty wines using Newfoundland berries and fruits. We have jelly bean roe, moose juice, crooked cod. We kissed one of those. Jelly bean roe. Taster number one. This is strawberry and partridge berry wine. Is it true you're just one of three wineries on one of two? There's only two. We're the best one. <laughs> well, there's a 50% chance. That's true. Strawberries and raspberries are from local farms, and all the other berries are wild. Just in the area, I assume. Yeah. Only because I kissed one the other day. Yeah. Would like to try crooked cod, please. Oh, you were screeched in then. Wait, what's getting screeched in? <laughs> a few too many of these, and you start to look at the. Crooked cod here is blueberry and raspberry. I would like to try half cut, please. Which I'm worried if I keep this pace up, I'll I may that. just be. Number half three. cut is a dandelion wine. I don't think I've ever had wine made of dandelion before. That is sweet, but it's very smooth. Yeah. We were just there. Surprising. Now, since Twillingate is touted as the iceberg capital of the world, with icebergs floating past in the spring and summer, well, they decided to take those icebergs, melt them down, and use the 20,000-year-old water in this wine. What's a bake apple? Do you bake the apple? What's Why not just apple? Wait, a bake apple is a berry? Yes, this oh. is a bake apple. Okay. See, we didn't come for the wines, we came for the learning. I'm, this is a learning experience. All right, let me try this bake apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little thicker, a little heavier. Sweet, but smooth. Well, I wanted to I wanted to have twice the... This isn't the kind of place you're tossing them back, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh I didn't know. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you all. Have a yeah. great day. Yes. It's been wonderful. I highly recommend it. Morning, Will. Morning. Ready for another day on the road? Always ready. Today is another road trip day. Not only are we going to a Canadian national park, but it is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is Grossmoor National Park. More specifically, this is Tablelands Trail, which will take you to a place that looks like Mars. They say this is the only place in the world where you can walk on the Earth's mantle. This orange, barren landscape is even more surprising when you realize that it's just an hour's drive away to this, which is a lot more like the fjords of Norway. This is also in Grossmoor National Park and is named Western Brook Pond. Now, it's clearly not a pond, but it is freshwater lakes surrounded by rock cliffs, waterfalls, one of which is 350 meters high, which makes it one of the highest in North America. Now, because this is a national park, this boat that we're on had to be specifically certified so it wouldn't cause any damage to the area. But I think I can officially certify it as a good time. <laughs> next nine episodes, as we travel across every province, I will be stopping in another Canadian National Park because I think it's a great representation of how Canada has such varying landscapes and topography, and they're always protected for a reason. They are fantastic and deserve to be experienced, so whether you can visit them yourself or just here, I'm happy to take you along. But I've also partnered with Destination Indigenous to bring you an Indigenous-owned tourism-based business, just like where we're headed next the Pirate's Haven ATV Friendly Adventures. This is exactly why I love ATV. It's an adrenaline-filled ride that takes you to an incredible and remote location like this. I did not expect to come across a meadow-covered cliff in Newfoundland. I don't want to use too much hyperbole and say this is stunning and the most incredible adventurous day I've ever had, but you've seen how awesome the video's been so far, and this might just top it all. We joined this group of friends from New Brunswick that have been ATVing across the whole province of Newfoundland together. 
and somehow we've all ended up here together on our last day. So we just pulled up on the lake. We're cooking up some uh, moose sausages. Doesn't get much better than this. Look at that. What a spot. Course. This is a four course meal. This is just the first course. Oh, Paul. What do you got here, Paul? Fresh molasses raising buns. Woo. Fresh loaded open three o'clock this morning. It puts the extra little flavor to your molasses and your raisins. I plan these trips, but I never fully know what to expect. And I, I did not expect having a moose burger next to the lake with a great group of people and we arrived by ATVs. I know I smile a lot in these videos and I'm generally a positive, happy guy, but look at this. Look at this smile. I know we're headed to Nova Scotia next, so they've got a big task ahead of themselves to impress me after the time we've had in Newfoundland. When you travel, you often pick the destination for the scenery or the experience. But afterwards, mostly you Let's remember the people. <laughs> nice. That's the Genovi? Yeah. Whew, that was awesome. This is dirty. Let's see. <coughs> Look at my... I think I might need some true earth. Time for, time for a deep clean. Well, after an incredible day and a very needed shower, we're headed there for traditional dinner. Oh, everybody's here! Family dinner! I mean, you knew it was going to be pan-fried cod, didn't you? Traditional dinner? Cheers. Thanks for joining us. Meeting people while traveling is always the best because we're all in a good mood. But also you often come from very different backgrounds. And so tonight's conversation is a mix of Acadian French and English combined with, well, drinks and laughter. But we can't stay up too late because tomorrow the adventure continues as we take the ferry to Nova Scotia. There is one more train tucked away against the Newfoundland backdrop on our way to the ferry, but we're in a rush to get to Halifax. Will, how much do you think this ferry costs? I would say 500 million, maybe? Well, if you think it costs 500 million, then I would say Marine Atlantic got a great deal because it only cost $100 million. All right, let's head upstairs and check it out. Wow, nine decks. We are about halfway through our ferry ride today and you can't see Nova Scotia, you can't see Newfoundland. But honestly, I couldn't ask for a better way to travel on a day like today. Sunny, warm, calm, not a thing in sight, except for the sister ship going in the opposite direction. They are lucky people headed to Newfoundland. I really didn't know what to expect from my time in Newfoundland, but I didn't expect to meet some fun Newfoundlanders at a small train museum, or to go hat fishing with a man who built a whole whale skeleton to have Canada Post officially stamp a postcard from Dildo, to walking on the Earth's mantle or eating moose burgers on a remote beach. And this was only scratching the surface of what Newfoundland has to offer. It has the friendliest people and the most incredible landscape, but there's more to Canada to see, so we have to keep going. Yeah, okay. okay. This is comfortable. I think it reclines. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can spend seven hours here. And we're second row, so we have a view the whole trip. I'm gonna be a happy guy. Let's get some food. Hey, you don't need to watch me eat. Why don't we just cut to a teaser of what's coming up in Nova Scotia. Next week on Downey Live Travels by Train, we get the full Atlantic Ocean experience with a little surfing, then drive along Canada's most scenic road, the Cabot Trail. We dance with the Eskasoni First Nations, we try our hand at lobster fishing, and even challenge a lumberjack and his mother to a team sawing race. Let's go! Teamwork even! Murder steady! All before boarding the ocean, where Emma points out her house. Okay, here we go, here we go. Ever gonna be able to see it? So you just watched the trailer for next week's video. I haven't seen it yet, because I haven't done it yet, which means I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. I'm Mike. Thank you for watching Downey Live Travels by Train, presented by True Earth. Thank you, True Earth. I'll see you next week. We got a postcard from Mike. And it's, uh, oh, Mike. <laughs>